In October 2022, the Glendale Heritage Preservation Museum opened its doors on another historical exhibit. This exhibit, Merchants of Glendale, looked back on a hundred years of merchants who had served the residents of Glendale. Creating the exhibit involved collecting 12 unwanted doors from Glendale's residences' basements. The doors became the panels on which the exhibit's photos and documents were hung. Here are some of the exhibit's panels. This building at Sharon in Congress was owned by the Kelly family for generations. Built in 1900, it began life as Kelly's Saloon. It later became Kelly's Grocery, but most people probably know it best as the Grand Finale Restaurant. Now known as the Meritage Restaurant, this building was built around the time of Glendale's incorporation in 1855. It was known as Bracker's Tavern. In the 1920s, the business installed a soda fountain that sold French Bauer ice cream. Overnight guests in the village lockup were served breakfast by the tavern. The Bluebird Bakery building used to house several shops, including the village plumber Walter Schatzman, the Willis Dooley Coal Company, and the Friedhof Tailoring Shop. On August 19, 1912, a tornado damaged the merchants on the west side of the village square. The first Glendale drugstore was opened in the late 19th century at 11 Village Square. William Lehrer operated the drugstore alongside a general dry goods store. Further down the street is the Century House, built in 1868. It survived the fire of 1880 that destroyed most of the merchants' buildings on the west side of the village square. Lair's store, followed by Stanley Newton's grocery, was a community gathering place. Inside was a black iron stove with a rail around it where people rested their feet. It's where neighbors sat and discussed the affairs of the nation, valley residents, and Glendale people. Children could count on a free handout from the Great Pickle Barrel. Herman Egler opened his first store in the village in 1894. By 1923, he had purchased the entire Willis Dooley Block building on the west side of the village square. Egler's was known for its homemade ice cream, which was made in a plant located behind the store. The ice cream plant closed in 1956. Now owned by the Eckstein Cultural Arts Center, this small standalone storefront on Sharon Avenue started out in the 1880s as Lawrence Dolman's sheet metal shop. Dolman built the box cutters that are so prevalent in Glendale. Later it became Cloud Nine Dress Shop, Jan's Florist, Glendale Interiors, and the local Yokel Organic Market. Here is J.J. Kelly's cash register, purchased in 1911 from the National Cash Register in Dayton, Ohio. When a sale was completed, the bell sounded, lending to the phrase ringing up, or in more modern terms, cha-ching. As part of the exhibit, Glendale Heritage Preservation invited visitors to share their own recollections of merchants of Glendale. Visitors were asked to write them in a binder titled, I Remember. Here are a couple of them. I remember riding our bikes all over Glendale to collect pop bottles and turn them in for candy at Cripes Deli and Market. We also loved getting nectar beverages at the soda fountain. Brenda Brockman Diefenbacher. My mother would call in an order at Newton's Grocery Store and send me with my wagon to pick up the groceries in the 1950s when I was aged between five and eight. My friend and I didn't realize the exchange of money for things, so we walked into Newton's one day and filled our pockets with candy. Needless to say, our mothers received a call before we even got home on Greenville Avenue. Glendale Heritage Preservation asked Robert Bright, 
to sit down and tell us what he remembers of merchants on Lincoln and Washington Avenues. Here are his recollections. Hello, fellow in Glendaleans. My name is Bob Wright. Though I don't live in Glendale anymore, I am a lifelong Glendalian. What's a Glendalian? Always a Glendalian. Uh, I was born in 1949, and my family lived on Washington Avenue, uh, the same house my father grew up in. We were uh, up in the part of Glendale where I lived at, even though it's not mentioned a lot when you uh, hearing different things about Glendale. We were a very integral part of Glendale being the community as it is today. Our parents, uh, they did a lot of the uh, work that was done around Glendale to make it, as I said, the community that we are today. We had um, businesses up on our end of town. There was like uh, several grocery stores, starting with um, one up on Lincoln Avenue, it was called Neal's, it was a small mom and pop shop. And then um, on Washington Avenue, there was one right, right around the corner from it called Bailey's. And then if you come further down Washington, there was a lady named Miss Carcio Gray. She was a hairdresser, but she also ran like a little store too, the little store that uh, us kids um, bought candy and small things like that from. And, um, also around the corner from her on Jefferson Avenue, there was a, believe it or not, a funeral home here in Glendale, and it was called Renfro's. It's where uh, Annadale Avenue is now. Um, as far as the businesses are concerned, that's pretty much it, what we had in our area, but they were a very integral part of our lives because um, we depended on those people to get some of the things we need. Um, now, some of the other businesses that was in our area, there was one um, at the corner of um, Congress Avenue in Washington called Benny's. And it was um, also a very integral part of our lives. It was not minority owned, but still uh, they had a lot of minority, uh, minority support in the community. Also across the street from it, uh, there was a store called Lausch's. We had a lot of little stores around our area for it to be such a small area, and they all thrived. They did a lot of business. There was one called Lausch's, and that place turned uh, changed hands on several occasions. It was a grocery store one time, and then it also became a laundromat, and at one time, there it was a, actually a gun shop, and I have an interesting little story I'd like to share about that. Um, us kids around there, I was around maybe 11, 12 years old, and the owner of the, the gun shop told all us kids around there, if we brought him a wheat penny, that he would give us a dime or 15 cents for it. So, you know, as a kid, somebody's gonna give you a dime or 15 cents for a penny. That was a pretty daggone good deal. So in any case, I had a penny one time that uh, I brought down there to uh, the gun shop. The guy's name was Nick. And uh, he was standing there talking to another customer that he had. And so I went in there and showed him the penny. And he stopped for a second and he looked it over real good. And he, he turned around and went to his cash register. And he took out some money. And I thought he was going to give it to the other gentleman who, that was standing there. And it was three $10 bills. And he took them and stuck them right in my face and said, here. And my eyes got as big as saucers, you know, because this is something that I was not expecting at all. And none of us kids had ever had experienced that. So, <coughs> excuse me. Needless to say, the candy store was right across the street from us. I got candy, ran all the way home, gave the money to my parents. They took it and it became household money. And that was the end of that story. So that's kind of an unforgettable story that I have. And. Also, it happened on Friday the 13th. So a lot of times people say Friday the 13th is unlucky and that's why I had luck in my life. And also my first son was also born on Friday the 13th. So I uh, failed to mention was there was a fishing lake up at the end of Lincoln Avenue and technically it was in Springdale, but we considered it as a part of Glendale. There was a gentleman named Dougie Lee that owned the lake and um, People would go up there and, um, I mean, 
you'd have a pretty good time up there. Um, they would catch a lot of fish, and uh, people would go up there and stay all night, and um, it was almost a party atmosphere a lot of the times up there, but um, it was a really a neat place to go.